Hello YouTube, this is Seamus Cameron and this is my automated Tinker's Construct Smeltery. So the way I've built this is just a basic smeltery. You know, you put the regular seared bricks together with the uh, seared tanks holding the lava, put a smeltery controller on it. What I've done is I put a hopper on here that will feed whatever you want into it really. Uh, for this demonstration I've put iron ore in it. Now the way I've built this is I've set it up so it can both make blocks and it can make ingots. So what I've put here is casting tables with, uh, what are they called, ingot casts? Yes, ingot casts on them. Now underneath this I've put hoppers, so once they start pouring it'll go straight into here and then the hoppers will pull it out and it'll suck it all the way over here into this chest. I've done a couple tests already. Uh, I was using cobalt and iron here. So, well, without further ado, let me just turn it on. First we have block mode, which is awesome. What it does is I put, I, I'll hit that lever and it will extend these pistons and it'll pour the molten iron into the casting basins, which are worth one block each. That's how much they hold. Once the casting basins are done and the iron is solidified, hoppers underneath them will pull it out and right here I'll have blocks of iron. I think it's already made it. Yeah, it has. So that's how that block mode works. What I've also put into it is what you've seen, ingot mode. It's a little more intensive. What I've built is a clock. It has seven repeaters on it, and it is one, two, three, by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wide. Three repeaters all set to their one, two, second click, or seven repeaters all set to their second click, sorry. All of these, second click. All the other repeaters in this build are on their first one. Just place them down, they're good to go. So what I've built here is a T flip flop, which bounces an item back and forth. In this case, a stone, just a bit of stone. When it hits the hopper that has a comparator on it, it will the comparator will emit a redstone signal, which the repeater takes and it pushes it to the other repeaters and the pistons. So to demonstrate, I'll show you. The way you turn the clock on, basically the way I built it is you have to close the circuit once. I've hit that, this stone, sorry, I should have used another block to make it a little more obvious, but this stone will close the circuit. The repeater will send its redstone signal into the stone, which will then transfer it over to this redstone right next to it. Now that the circuit is closed, all you have to do is start the clock. This sends a quick pulse to here, which travels through here. Now what that does, this clock activates this piston, which pushes this stone over here, where it's the same thing as that over there. This redstone repeater goes through the stone, transfers this redstone. Now this redstone turns these torches on and off. And if you didn't know, a hopper with a redstone signal next to it will not move items. So that's what, uh, it's a, called the T flip flop. So it flips the stone back and forth, just flip flops. Now when that stone is there, obviously I've already told you, the comparator picks it up and it sends it to here. Now I have this timed so that every time it can make an ingot, it does. See how it gets pulled out and then as soon as the redstone block shows up, it starts pouring again? That This is perfectly timed for my computer. Might be different depending on your computer, but it, it, could, it could be different, you never know. It probably depends a little bit on CPU and how much lag you have. I'm not entirely certain on that one. But that will just keep running and running and running. Also what I've done here is I've put a little kill switch on the hopper here. Redstone goes to the hopper and that will either stop or let the items pass that are in it. And that's pretty much my smeltery. In a nutshell, that's how it works. Just a simple clock, the start and the closed circuit. Oh, this is also used to kill it once you're done. See? Click. Pulls that piston back and... Oh, hey. No more moving back and forth. And occasionally these will get, when you turn it off, it could get stuck that they're right next to that. If you don't like that, all you have, oh, I keep forgetting those are glow, uh, ghost blocks, my bad. If you don't like that, all you have to do is hit this button and it'll pull it back in. Or here, I'll just demonstrate. Push the button, sends it for one, and it'll just send it for one loop. So it'll push these up next to those, it'll make three more, and then it'll be done. Then all you have to do to close it, hit it again. It just does what one pulse of the clock would do, basically. Now, all the way I've wired this, it's pretty simple. I just kind of put a lever there. I, I couldn't really think of a cleaner way to work with it. I haven't redstoned in a while. I, I, <laughs> I was really rusty, honestly. It was, it was pretty bad. But I just put a lever here, which transmits a redstone signal to this block. The repeater picks that up and puts it to this torch on the other side of this block. 
Now from there, the redstone just runs. And I had to put repeaters in here because the signal was getting too long and, well, too weak. And then it goes up here. This redstone climbs up, inputs to this block. That turns off this torch, which in turn puts that absence of signal to this block, which lets this torch turn on. And then the uh, torch on, uh, the torch on signal transfers to this, which turns it off. It's just a basic step up. Uh, it inverts it every single time as well, so keep that in mind when you're building. And then from here, it just goes here. Um, you can also put a T flip flop on this. It would be entirely possible. You just need a lot more repeaters because it takes longer to fill up the casting basins. And I didn't feel like figuring that out after I figured out the ingots. If you want to, by all means, put a T flip flop on it and then it'll be completely automatic. Just keep running and running and running as long as there's, you know, ores to put in. And that is how I have automated this Tinker's Construct smeltery. Don't remember if I told you about the hopper. Yes, I believe I told you about the hoppers. How they just run underneath the they run underneath the casting basins as well. You can see it here. And you just have hoppers running, and that pulls the block out. Same as the ingots over here, and that's how it works. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that you can use it in some of your own worlds, some of your own builds. And I I'd love comments and you know just messages, whatever, telling me how I can improve it and how you've used it, whatnot, and if this was useful to you. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment, leave a message, and I'll be sure to answer them as soon as possible. This has been Seamus Cameron, and have an awesome day. Bye.